What time is it? It's 1.30. It gets dark at 8.30. I have seven hours. We're gonna make a lure and catch a fish in seven hours or less. I don't have time to explain. I'm just gonna start. Okay, yeah, I'll just use this piece of balsa wood. It's gonna be made out of balsa wood. Okay, so what kind of lure? Um, uh, I can go top water. I can make a crankbait. It's not gonna be sinking. I, I do want it to float. Top. Okay, we're gonna make, we're just gonna make a small little crankbait. Totally reasonable. That's too big. Gonna cut this out. I'm gonna move straight to cutting this lip out out of this thin piece of Lexan polycarbonate. That thing, this is a Dremel bit. It's uh, the right circumference of the lip that I want for this bait. So I just used it as a stencil. All right, gotta cut this out. All right, it fits, it's symmetrical. It's uh, the right shape and everything. Okay, I'm going to start, well, I'm gonna smooth off these edges actually. Okay, now I'm gonna chamfer all these edges. We started at 1.30. It's only 1.44 right now. Yes, we haven't done much, but we've gotten these two pieces ready to go already, so we're really moving along here. This is gonna be a little through wire bait too, so I need to make a wire harness after I champ for all these edges and smooth them off. This will be a solid little bait. I'm hoping to have it finished by at least four o'clock. And there's gonna be a lot of techniques in this video that uh, are, if you're in a rush and you need things to dry quickly and to make a bait in one day, this is how you do it. I drew out all the lines that'll give me a good idea of where to carve to. Okay, that's a nice little shape for a lure. I like that. Going Garth Brooks on you guys, I like that. Yeah, even though I'm making this lure in just seven hours, well, under seven hours, I'm making, even though I only have like four hours to make this lure, um, I'm trying to make it like look nice too, you know? I need a good thumbnail. I still want a good example of, you know, a beautiful lure. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. If I start yammering, I'm gonna fail this whole video. Next, I need to drill a hole in the belly and cut a slot in this body to accept some lead and a through wire harness. Oh, I accidentally hit record. I'm gonna drill out the hole first and then cut the slot. Took a giant guess on where the best place for the lead should be. I'm marking it and drilling it out. Balsa wood sucks to drill out. If you don't have really sharp bits, you'll just end up mushing the wood. Little lead hole. Next, gotta cut the slot. Oh, oh, <laughs> sounded like I just turned 80 years old. Ooh. Not even marking a line, just eyeballing it like a pro. Some say I'm a master. So now we need to make a wire form harness. I don't know what the best word to use in this situation is for this wire thing, but we're bending wire that is going to be in this bait. There's the line tie. Oh, one second. I need to break the hacksaw out and make this slot larger. It doesn't really do the trick. Sandpaper. Gives me a chance to center the slot a little better too. I'll just sand one side of the slot 
to where it needs to be. And then it opens it up past the diameter of this wire too, so it fits nicely. Okay, that'll be good. It still fits really snug, but that'll be good. Oh, I need to turn my lead pot on. So that's ready, because I'm gonna be pouring lead really soon. Okay, so I have my line tie sticking out as far as I want it, maybe a little more, that, just like that. And then I'm gonna grab exactly where I want my first hook hanger to be. I'm gonna bend that down, because the wire has to go down. I don't know why I'm getting all step by step on you guys with this, but it's what I'm doing, so. Then you grab it where you want the, where you want your wire to bend back around, you grab it right there and bend it back around. Sorry. I think I just smacked the microphone. Make the loop. This bait's gonna have little square loops. Like that. Then you need to bend it so it travels down to the back of the lure. So just a 45 degree turn. Like that. The more you work with wire and bend it, the cleaner all this gets. I need to cut this slot a little deeper. Right now it's a little too far towards the bottom of the lure. I wanna put the slot deeper so it, the loop can be centered with the center line of this bait. One second. You want to make sure you compensate for uh, there being some clear coat on the body of this bait. So you don't want your line ties to be completely enveloped by the clear coat. So you want them to stick out a little more, you know. So you, then you just grab it, last spot to grab it and bend the wire around. And there is the wire form for this bait. This whole thing is going to get shaped. What was I just trying to say? This whole thing's gonna get put inside of this slot and then just enveloped in super glue. Right now, actually. That is what I'm gonna do right now. And then I'm gonna put lead in this bait. That looks kinda cool. It's got square line ties and hook hangers. Cause I just did it with pliers really fast. All right, I'm gonna super glue this in. This is extra thin super glue. It's just like water. And uh, you don't need much. This stuff happens to get really hot when it when it cures too. You can hear it sizzle. And yes, the hole where the lead's gonna be is also the hole that this, a little hair right there, that this line tie comes out of. I'm gonna go make sure I have GoPro batteries charged for when I'm fishing later today, but I think that'll give that lead pot enough time to heat up and be ready to pour. All right, I got some batteries charging. It's 2.07 right now. We're making good time. There's gonna be some things that require like a half hour of dry, drying time, so I need a, a lot for that. I think the lead's ready. The lead's not ready yet. So I guess while the lead's heating up, I can make the slot and the lip so the lip goes around the wire that's gonna be inside of this bait. No messing around. All right, it fits good. Where is all of this hair coming from? All right, there's the lid. Just waiting on the lead still. Okay, this lead's ready to go. Carefully gonna drip some drops into that hole. A tiny little balsa wood bait like this doesn't need much lead. Poured a little bit too much lead, so I'm cutting it away with a utility knife, the excess. I'm not sanding it away. You don't want to create lead dust. You just want to cut it away. And a super sharp razor knife like this works great. So this is baking soda. And I'm gonna fill this lead hole and the, the wire slot full of baking soda. So all of that's already covered and dry. I need to do that to the nose really quick here. I'm gonna sand this seam smooth and then the wood will be ready to seal. I'm actually just filing it smooth. So this is five minute epoxy and I'm gonna thin it down with quite a bit of denatured alcohol. That's gonna slow the uh, curing time down quite a bit, but it's also gonna make it thin enough to where it's gonna penetrate the wood grain and seal the bait really well and really quick. It's already starting to thicken up and it's only been mixed for like 40 seconds, so you have to apply this pretty fast. If you're doing this on a large bait, um, you gotta hurry. 
but this small bait should be no big deal. This is not a good substitute for a clear coat. Don't do clear coats like this. <laughs> They'll turn super yellow and they won't be very durable because you added so much denatured alcohol, but this works just fine for penetrating the wood grain and sealing the wood. That's not even dry yet and it's all bumpy because the epoxy took the shape of the bumpy not smooth balsa wood. But before it dries, I'm gonna slap some real silver foil leaf on this bait. Just like that, on both sides. And this is gonna speed up the paint job. Cool trying to clean some stuff up. This isn't gonna be a super clean foil job whatsoever, but we can say it's foil now. That's kind of cool. So now this is going to get an acrylic clear coat that dries in 15 minutes. Almost forgot to tape the lip off. Okay, got the lip taped off. Need to seal this foil in now. You can see it has a pretty smooth clear coat now. I'm probably gonna do one more of those. Actually two more probably. And then we're gonna start painting. Okay, we're already on to painting and it's 12.50 right now. Sorry, did I say 12.50? 2.50 right now. I think we're gonna make it. I'm gonna get this bait painted. Nothing special here. Put some white towards the belly. So as you can see during that foil job, there's some spots that peeled up. Um, I'm gonna come back in with an air, with a hand brush here with some black and cover those and I'm gonna give this bait kind of a crappie look. You always have to find a creative way to hide the imperfections. The crappie is a super contrasting paint scheme too. I feel like it's vi really visible in the water. It's always a solid choice. Sometimes it's not about matching the hatch, it's just about using a paint scheme that is very visible. Not gonna paint gills on this bait, so I'm gonna continue this pattern all the way up to the head. I think over the back too. We're getting there. I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, this color. It's a really dark greenish blue and it's uh, detailed so it's transparent. And I'm gonna put that over the top, over the back, and it's gonna come down the shoulders a little bit and uh, make a spot for the eye, glue the eye on, and we're ready to clear coat already. Keeping it quick. Just waiting for this black paint to dry so I can start spraying it again. It's really humid in the garage today, so the paint's taking a little longer to dry. Adds to the challenge. Last color that's gonna go in the airbrush is a detail black. I'm probably gonna put that along the top and around the eye socket, cause that's like way too much bluish green along the back. I need to tone that down a bit. Just a touch of glue and an eye. And it's time to clear coat. So for the clear coat, I'll be using an, this Alumalite UV cure clear coat because you can dip it and then subject it to a whole bunch of UV light and then it will clear the clear coat in like a half an hour and it's ready to fish after that half an hour. Very convenient if you need a lure made and clear coated in a half an hour. That's gonna spend a little while dripping and then it's going in here. That's a pretty good looking bait for just being made in uh, 3.30 right now. Did I make this bait in two hours? Let me look back at the footage, one sec. I made this bait in two hours. That's nuts. Okay, it's just about ready to get, like fish with. Uh, it needs probably like 10 more minutes in the UV cabinet. And then we're gonna try to catch a fish. Let's go. Walking out to the fishing spot. It's 4.07 right now. I'm kind of surprised I made this bait in two hours. Got to get a thumbnail of it, and then we're going to start fishing. Well, it works extremely well. Whole bunch of wobble. But this pond is completely blown out, as you can see. 
And I'm very tempted to go to a lake with this thing that isn't affected by floodwaters and try to catch a fish there. Yep, that's exactly what I'm going to do. A few more casts though. You guys will be able to see the action better at a cleaner lake also. Let's go. I got a bit of a drive. Making a quick stop on my way out to the lake at this pond might be a really good choice. Oh, dang. Some big bullfrog tadpoles swimming around. Got one. Wow. What time is it? 4.40. Challenge complete. But not over. I want to catch more. Nice bass. Got another. Ooh. It's official. Bass like crankbaits that are made fast. I know the wind over here is going to be brutal, but I need to see if there are fish over here. There is. There's one. Well, they are biting at this pond here, but I still want to finish the day up at the lake. Yeah, I want to see what I can do at the lake. found a cannibal. Apparently crappies like crankbaits made fast too. Well, all I caught here was a crappie. I'm going home. I should have stayed at that pond. Chip, chip, come here. Good boy. We did it, Chip. Mission successful. We made a crankbait and caught a fish in under four hours. It's got to be some kind of record. That's pretty crazy. It was, it was very under four hours. I'm kind of proud of myself right now. I should probably calm down. Okay. I'm probably going to do more of these in the future with like different types of lures. That'd be cool. Just like speed building the baits and going out and trying to catch a fish. Stay out of the strawberries, Chip. Chip's always getting in the strawberries now. It's not going to give me a chance to eat any. Anyway, should probably end this video. On to the next bait. You guys saw that. Yeah. Okay, because I saw you a few weeks ago out there. I think the waders had not still fixed it. 
Oh no, I was, that wasn't me. I don't have waders.